Hi, Anna Marie Cox, um, live vlogging um, uh, the book Snark by David Denby. And I, I'd start off with another list uh, this time. It is now a list um, by Professor C Christopher P. Craig of the University of Tennessee. And um, it is a list of the most frequently mentioned areas of personal vulnerability in Roman oratory. Denby refers to it as Craig's list. <laughs> of ancient snark. Uh, and here it is. Um, one, embarrassing family origins. Two, being unworthy of one's family. Three, physical appearances. Four, eccentricity of dress. Five, gluttony and drunkenness, possibly leading to acts of cruelty and lust. Six, hypocrisy and appearance of virtuousness. Seven, avarice, sometimes linked with prodigality. Prodigality. Eight, taking bribes. Nine, pretentiousness. Ten, sexual conduct. Eleven, hostility to one's family. Twelve, cowardice in war. Thirteen, squandering one's patrimony. Uh, Fourteen, aspiring to, to tyranny, also often associated with violence, libido, arrogance, and cruelty. Fifteen, cruelty to citizens and allies. Sixteen, plunder of private and public property. And seventeen, oratorical ineptitude. And, uh, you can just pause for a moment and think about that last one as applied to what I'm doing to David Denby. I would not accuse him of any of the other things, although some of them may be true. Uh, in any case, what I think is interesting about that and sort of what points to a whole problem um, with the book and also this specific chapter, which has to do with the roots of snark in ancient Greek and Greece and Rome, is that um, that is not a list of ancient snark. That is a list of things that one could possibly make fun of. Um, there is nothing about those topics in and of themselves uh, that makes them knowing or nasty, which, as regular viewers know, are the two defining features of snark. There's nothing about the topics that makes them jokes themselves snark. And here is why this chapter is so frustrating, because basically anything that Denby likes is wit. Anything he doesn't like is snark. He's left sort of floundering about. I, I think actually Plato would be very, very frustrated with him. Um, and uh, his his lack of, of definition of his terms. Um, anyway, so again, I'm going to flip through, um, try to look at some things that I've written in the margins. I wish there's a lot, as noted previously. No, you can't see there. Um, he spends the first part of the chapter on um, uh, Lewis Carroll, which I, I can't make fun of. Uh, and then we sort of, we, 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 there's, there's a little bit of a, a, of a theme when he starts to say, at the end of the hunting of the snark, um, snark, uh, the, the snark that's a bougie makes the hunters disappear. And so he says snark is the thing that makes you disappear. And it sort of develops into kind of an obsession with the idea that snark can kill. Um, two of the ancient Greek poets that he cites um, apparently inspired their, uh, the targets of their, of their satire to actually commit suicide. Um, which my understanding is actually probably not true, but when he goes to verify this and the professor tells him it's not true, she does say that um, Greek satirists would like to be able to claim that their targets had, had committed suicide. So actually he's just sort of propping up um, the false advertising of ancient Greek satirists, which um, I guess he also wrote a book about. Um, he ta When talking about the satire, he also mentions that the satire plays um, not snark, uh, or, or were kind of snarky, I should say, um, had revelers and fornicators who banged another one another on the head with giant phalluses. And here I have to note, this is two of, of Denby's great obsessions colliding. Uh, when it gets right down to it, he, he does try to come up with a, the different, a way of defining the difference between irony um, and wit uh, from snark. Uh, he says that irony, of course, a force for good, uh, splits the audience into those who get it and those who don't. It sets up a hierarchy of wit between two parties. If this confuses those who have been following along and, and know that Dindy, one of Dindy's definitions of snark is knowingness, I, I understand your confusion. But we will read on. Um, because you know what? It's not, the thing about irony, it's not knowing in that shallow way of snark, but in a more serious way, the most serious way. 
It depends on the reader's critical intelligence and understanding, perhaps his sense of tragedy. Irony assumes that God is laughing at you. Snark assumes that your frat brothers are laughing with you. Funnily enough, I do actually believe that God is laughing at David Denby.